Well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And what a great uh, fellowship. What great sharings and great heart. And God really is with each and every one of us. You know, there's nothing that we have to worry, fear or doubt about. Even though sometimes circumstances can make us feel like things ain't going our way or we're waiting for something to come through for us. But God is faithful. God will never, ever let you down. He wants you to keep your focus on him. He wants you to stay with him no matter what's going on no matter what it is it could be the worst situation going on god is faithful god is a god of deliverance he sees in order to provide and all he wants us to do is stay with him not trust in ourselves, but trust in the living god who is able to provide deliver give direction restore rekindle things you know to make everything right he can do that but he needs our faith he needs our confidence and trust in him, not worries, fears, and doubts. Sometimes when we go through situations, we complain, oh God, this is not going right for me. This He knows that. He knows that. He's just saying, look, give it to me and tell me what you want me to do. In Isaiah 26, 3, I've mentioned this verse so many times because it's such a powerful verse and truth. Thou will keep him. God will keep you in perfect peace mm -hmm. whose mind whose yeah. mind yeah. is stayed on thee because yeah. he trusted in thee that word mind is imagination when things are going wrong when things are not panning out how we would like them to do what happens in the imagination we think the worst we think how can god come through in this situation how can god deliver me in this situation for jesus to walk on the wall to his mind had to be yeah. stayed on god his vision of, of walking on that water, his imagination, had to, he had to see himself walking on that water to walk on that water. Now, that's faith in operation. So he had the faith. He's seen himself walking on the water before he walked on the water, and then he stepped out. Now, there's no scripture to back that up, but this is how faith works. Faith says it is already done. God calls those things which are not as though they were. And like Carl Morton meant, mentioned earlier on about in the beginning. No, God said, light be. Light wasn't. So that's why he said, light be. The substance for light was always available. Just that it wasn't manifested until it was spoken. So when we get challenged with different situations, circumstances, and they go, they go on, they happen for everyone, Right. If we focus on that, then what is it doing? It's building an image on our mind. The more we focus on that, the more we come into worry, fears, doubts, anxiety, uh, and fear. Like, you know, we, we start to fear the worst. So what we have to do when you are challenged with something, yeah, and your feelings are real. The feelings are real. Like, you know, you can get a knot in your stomach. You can lose your breath a little bit because something's going on and it's not being resolved in your timing. But God says, trust in me. Like, trust me. He wants you to totally depend upon him. Father, I don't know what to do. You know the situation. I trust you, the living God, who is able to deliver, who knows the way where there seems no way. Our God is the way maker. And so when we respond to our circumstances, we get the same of what we're already been receiving. But when we respond to God in faith and an expectation that he's going to change it, then he can go to work. Then we need to speak it. So we see what we desire. So if you've got a situation right now, see what you want from that, how you want to be out of it, how you want to be delivered, how, how you want to be feeling in that. Get it in your mind. Get that image in your mind. See yourself as you want it to be. And then you start to speak it. Like Becky, when she come on, she said, all is well. So we don't say all is down, everything's going wrong. You know, when we say that, we're just creating the same thing. There's no faith coming from those words. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the words from God or hearing the word of God, the scriptures, the promises in those scriptures. So thou, God, will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on God. So we keep our focus on God. When Peter got out of the boat, his focus was on the Lord Jesus Christ. He began to walk on water, but the storms around him, the problems, the 
illnesses, the bank, the upset in the relationship started to swarm around him. And he started to look at that. He took his eyes off Jesus Christ. He needed to stay focused to continue to walk. But as soon as he's looking at all these things, he come down in faith. So as he come down in faith, he sunk, right? Lord, save me. He got to desperation. Lord, save me. And, and he reached out his hand and Jesus took him by the hand and pulled him to the surface. Oh, you little, little faith. Why did you doubt, Peter? Why did you doubt? It was so simple. He said he was off little faith because he had the faith. He had the faith. And it was very simple. He just looked at Jesus. That's all he had to do. What made you? He got him to question himself. What made you doubt? He looked at the winds. Yeah. He looked at the waves. And this is what we do with our circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a bill come through the door or you get a bad doctor's report or you get a, you have an argument with someone and all the emotions are turned up and stuff like this. And that's when, what do you do? You go for a walk, you go for a drive. You go to, to your knees and then you pray, Father, this is not right. So I give it to you. Now, all is well, Father. I thank you that you're working in this situation to remedy the situation, to put everything back into its place. One of the greatest things that you can do, my friends, is pray. God wants you to go to him in prayer. And I'm not just on about speaking in time. I'm on about praying with your heart and your mind, sitting down with God, getting the focus in. Sit down, even if you're anxious, even if you're stirred up, just take the time and sit down. Breathe up through your nose, out through your mouth, like they did on the day of Pentecost, waiting to receive Holy Spirit to speak in tongues, right? Just do that. Up through your nose, out through your mouth, calm it all down. Calm those raging seas within your heart down. Father, I invite you in to this situation. I invite you into my little storm that's going on because it's not mine. I didn't ask for it, but it's there. Now I give it to you. Help me, Lord. Help me. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of what? Grace, that we might find mercy and help in the time of need. God says, come to me. If you've got one problem, give it to me. If you've got 16,000 million problems, give them to me, right? Be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. When you're anxious, you cannot think straight. When you're full of fear, you cannot think straight. Yeah. That's why God says he hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. When you're fearing, you haven't got a sound mind. So what does it mean? You've got an insane mind, right? Because you're not thinking properly. So Jesus Christ said, be of good cheer when he spoke to his disciples. And that's an Orientalism meaning have your thoughts well arranged. Get your thoughts well arranged. Put your thoughts in the right compartment boxes. Don't let them loose. Don't let the good thoughts and the bad thoughts mix together. Bring in every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Okay, it says, bring it all in. Cast down those imaginations. Reasoning. The reasoning in your mind. You, you've got that picture in your mind of why it's wrong and why it's not going right. You're trying to work it out. You're trying to figure out your finances. You're trying to figure out your relationships. You're trying to figure out your life and living. God says, don't try and figure it out, but give it to me. Get your thoughts well arranged, <clears throat> well arranged thoughts. So when a negative thought comes up, it's a stray. Because you're, if you start practicing your good thoughts on, on God and what he's saying and what he's putting in your heart, when those negative thoughts come in, they are highlighted pretty quick. And it's up to you to bring that in and say, no, I refuse that thought. I refuse to worry. Why should I worry? My father is the creators of the heaven and the earth, the whole universe. And I've got his spirit in me. And I am seated at his right hand side in the heavenly places. And I rule and reign in this life by one Jesus Christ. I have his authority. I'm an heir of God. And I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Everything Jesus has inherited, you've inherited. It's yours also. Now you've got to know that. Once you know that, then you can start exercising your rights, your sonship rights. You've got many sonship rights. 
you can start exercising your authority. Light be in this dark situation. I command it out. I refuse to believe this. I refuse to accept it. But it's real, Lawrence. It's really real. It's not as real as my God. It's an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> it's an illusion. Yeah, it's yeah. a carnal fault. It's a carnal reality. It's not the true reality of the truth of who God says I am in Christ. It says, as he is, so am I in this world. Now, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Or in a woman. If you think yourself that you're not worthy, you are not worthy. You are absolutely right. If you think you're a failure, then you're going to continue to be that. If you think that everything always goes wrong for you, then it's always going to go wrong for you. If you think everything's going well, but something's going to happen, there's always something comes up. We say that. It always something will come up. You don't give the enemy a chance to ride in on words, on your words, on your negative words. Watch your mouth. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I, I, I can remember I used to swear a lot when I was a kid and the teacher would say to me, <laughs> watch your mouth, Lawrence. <laughs> the wife tells me that now. Like, watch your mouth. As I wash it out with soap and water, right? <laughs> but we got the washing and watering of the words, of the heavenly, wonderful words. You are righteous. You're right before God. So that means in, if there's something wrong in your situation, you are still righteous. Nothing's changed between you and God, that relationship and your sonship. My parents will always be my parents. No other people can be my parents. They could be my foster parents, right? Or something like that. But they're not my blood parents. Well, God's our spiritual father, which supersedes everything in this world. So God wants you to really practice bringing your thoughts captive into the being's Christ, controlling your mind and control your thinking. And if you can do that, then you can control your emotions. Your body is like a subconscious. That's it plays everything plays out in your body. What's in your subconscious mind plays out in your body. That's why a lot of people have sicknesses, illnesses. Mm -hmm worries, fears, doubts, anxiety, because they haven't taken these things to God. In fact, you're actually delivered from those things. We've been delivered from the authority of darkness. By the stripes of Christ, you were healed. It's already a reality in the spiritual. Now your word, you need to say, I am healed. It's done. It is finished. Jesus said it was finished, right? And it's already a true reality in the spirit. Now we need to get the spiritual realities coming into our physical. Why do you think God says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now you don't have to work for that. You go to God, you keep him first. You practice what you know and what you've been encouraged. And God as you move by the spirit of God, as you're following the encouragement as well, that God's given and what God's put in your heart, you are being renewed day by day. You're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. You're not getting weaker after 50 years. You may think you are, but that's your carnal mind. You reckon that dead baby, you are alive in Christ. You're quick. You've got the quickening spirit of God within you. Now you need to let it out of your mouth. Now you need to say what you want and not what you see. You need to call those things which are not as though they were. This is how our father operates. This is how our father speaks. And this is how we are to speak. It says, be imitators of God, dear children, Ephesians 5.1, and walk in love. Love is the foundation of everything. This love is not a whimsical love, but love is moving with God. There's many expressions of love. We were talking about this in our leaders meeting. Like there's forgiveness, there's compassion, you know, there's kindness, there's good words. Love is not selfish, doesn't think of themselves all the time. No, you can, that's a good checkup from the neck up. If you're being, if you're a person that thinks of you only first, you know, rather than going to God first, then are you really walking in love? Because it's all about you. It's not all about you, it's all about God. Then it all becomes about you so that you can give it to others. What did God say? Jesus say, we're to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, 
with all our soul, will, mind and emotions and all our strength. Your soul is your will, your mind, your motion, your intellect. God wants to be first in all those areas. Why? Because you're going to have the best, bestest life. <laughs> the best life with God is now. Your best life ain't down the road. It's now. Today is the day of salvation. And then it says we're to love others as we love ourselves. You've got to love yourself. If you look in that mirror and you don't love yourself, then you would need to ask God to help you to love yourself. Because we shouldn't be dealing with our old issues all the time. They may try and resurface once we've been healed from them and delivered, but we don't give it attention. No, I'm healed from that. I'm healed from being the person I was before. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm a son of God of power. I'm a daughter of God of power. I am a light in this world. I am very important to God. I am a VIP. You are a VIP believer. You are very important to God. You need to realize this. You are valuable. You know good when you've lost your breath. When you're dead, God can't do anything in your life then, can he? He can raise you up from the dead. But you're more valuable to him alive. And he wants you to enjoy the life that he's given you. He doesn't want you to go through every day with problem after problem. Now, if there are problems after problem, then that's where we practice to go to God. That's where we practice to set our thoughts in order, to get God's image in mind, to practice like a bulldog on a pit bone, like a pit like a pit bull, like a pit bull on a, or whatever it is, like a dog on a bone, right? <laughs> they're on that bone. They're <laughs> chewing that bone and they're not letting it go. My dog, Lily, when she was alive, you give her a ball, she would not let that ball go. No, not for love of money. And she locked her jaw on it. There's no one getting it out of her mouth. And she would not let it go until she was ready. And that's how we have to be when it comes to our peace. Because Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. And we got that peace in us. So where is it gone? It hasn't got up and walked out the door, right? It's only because we've let negative thoughts and circumstances stop us. So our minds come out of alignment and we're on the carnal. And now we're being touched by the force of this world. But when you bring your mind and your words back, then you're not touched by the force of the world because you'll see it for where it really is. I put a sharing on my, my last sharing, God's vantage point. Um, you know, you when you go up to a mountain, you've got a vantage of seeing everything in front of you. When you're below it, you can't see everything in front of you, right? But you are seated at the highest location in heaven. You've got a vantage point. We got God's perspectives. We need to come from God's perspective, not our carnal perspective, not even our religious perspective, not even the things that we may have learned before perspective, but from the heart of God. You got to access to his mind through the spirit of God. We've got the mind of Christ. He's got the mind of God, right? So now do we believe this? Well, it can't be, Laura. You don't know me. You know, the <laughs> things I've done. But that's the carnal. It's dead. Yeah. Stop bringing it alive. Okay. That's the carnal aspect of us. It's dead. It's gone. Don't, it's a smoke screen. It's illusion. It's a, oh, no, I could dance. <laughs> it's an illusion, right? It's an illusion. It is an illusion. Oh, but it's real. It's right there in front of me. I can see it. I can smell it. I can taste it. I can touch it. It's no, it's, it's an illusion. It's a mirage, like going through the desert. You're thirsty. You know, there's no water for thousands of miles, and you're walking through the desert. All of a sudden, you see a nice oasis, palm trees. You see the <laughs> nice swimming pool there, fountains of water all over the place, and you go to dive into it, and it's, you just go into the sand. That's how some believers live. We don't want to live like that. We are in the real land flowing with milk and honey. We've got to stop confessing, I haven't got this share. No, God hasn't come through for me yet. I can't abundantly share this month because I haven't got this. That's, that's a lie. God gives seed to the sower and he multiplies your seed sown. Withhold the seed, then you're withholding your own blessings. God's not, God's not withholding anything. He needs your action of faith. He needs a point of contact. He needs you to do these things. This is why he gives it to us to do for our benefit. It's for our benefit when we honor God. If you stop sowing, you'll stop reaping. All right, simple as that. So it's up to you. And we've given great encouragement 
on this Zoom fellowship by the Spirit of God, we can show this from the scriptures too. It's very simple. Be not mocked. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For what a man soweth, that shall he reapeth. Not only about what you sow, but the heart you sow it with. We were talking about these things. I had a one-on-one -on -one with Amber. I sent a lot of you the audio. Yeah, brilliant. It's got to be done from the heart. And what comes from the heart? Is either fear or faith. Is either what is what you put in there. It's what you turn your attention to. God isn't giving you a spirit of fear. We've heard loads of times tonight now. God is not giving you a spirit of fear. False evidence appearing real. But God has given you a spirit of power. Power. Love. And a sound mind to make sound vision. Sound decisions and logical thinking thoughts oh yes it's you know i see the benefit of what god says will happen if i honor god with my substance oh i see the benefits from this sound mind now because i'm operating from the mind of christ of speaking in tongues mm. oh i see the benefits of connecting i'm not on my own i really thought i was on my own but oh, other people are going through similar things because Satan wants to make you, and I don't like mentioning him, but he wants to isolate you. If he can make you feel on your own, then you'll bum out. You'll stop practicing, and then you'll stop really receiving. You know, you are not alone either. You are not alone. God is always present with you. We got a mighty God. We're not even putting him to work. Put God to work. Use your faith. Act on your faith. You believe God? You want abundance, you're praying for abundance, you're not honoring God, you ain't going to get it. You can get it from Satan if you want, or other means. But if you want to do it God's way, then you need to do these things. A laborer, if you, if you are serious, if you are really wanting to be that leader for God, and you're praying for laborers, and you're not doing the first things first, don't expect a laborer. Because they only end up like you, doing the same thing and not doing anything. Thank God that they're saved and they got the spirit of God, but they're not going to produce. And God wants us to be fruitful. This is God's heart. I'm not, I'm not saying all these things for nothing. This is what God says in the scriptures. He wants you to be very productive. This fellowship should be very productive. I was sharing with someone, Joel Wolstein. They have a big mega church there. They have a big mega church there, right? And in that mega church, they have 25,000 people come. Now, it looks like they got sound doctrine. Now, he says a lot of wonderful things. I love Joel Stein. I love, you know, these yeah. positivities, wonderful confessions. Mm -hmm. But they're not moving in the right way because if, if they were really moving in the right way, then it wouldn't be just one mega church, one stadium. It would be thousands of stadiums, right? But what does God say in the scriptures? What, what do we see in the scripture from house to house? That's the quickest way it moves. That's the quickest way it moves. And even if you look at the honoring God there, you can see from outside, if you use your spiritual mind, and I'm not making a negative judgment, I'm making an observation, that obviously people pay for their seats to keep that going, right? To keep that big stadium living and going. Joel Singh doesn't take any of the money for the abundant sharing, right? Because all of that money that comes in and from the offering keeps the building going, not the people going. He makes his money from his books. He tells you yeah, all these things. Yeah, yeah. Where is that in the scriptures? Now, it's a good business mind. It's a very good business mind. Give him credit for that. But it isn't how, like you see in India, and then you see in Nepal, how these guys are just encouraged to look to God. You know, they're not pampered and babysat. Okay, you believe God, this is what you do. Go and do it. And then it's up to them. In the West, everyone's, oh, Lawrence, you know, you've got to be kind to me. And, you know, you know you, you, you've got to give me chance and all. No, no, there's nothing to do with me. What's your desire? Do you really want the things of God? And what are you doing to go after those things of God? This is the truth. Let's get down to the truth of all of this, right? What's your desire? Do you want to procrastinate? Come in a little bit, send a little bit of abundant sharing. Or are you in it with your full heart? Because you've got to be in it with your full heart. God knows your heart. That's what he looks at all the time. The only thing he's interested in your heart, what's coming out of that heart. And he helps you with the rest of it. You know, it's like, 
He helps you with your health. He helps you with your finances. But he just wants to be first. And God wants you to be genuine. We don't come on here and put two faces on. What you see is what you get from me, yeah. right? And uh, and, I, and I'm doing the things to the best of my understanding and with a pure heart because I want everyone to prosper, to be successful with God on this Zoom fellowship. And I'm pouring my heart out as much as I understand and I know to do. And I'm always willing to change if I'm wrong in any area. And that's the heart we got to have. You know, and sometimes we need to talk straight with people, individually, one-on-ones, because my job is who's desiring God? Who's really pursuing with heart, with the heart, with love, with humbleness, with meekness, with tenderness? Because this is what's going to make you move. So I look for these things. I look for these things. Oh, I couldn't call you this month. So I was so busy and blub. Rubbish. Rubbish. You know, you can call anytime. 24 here, 24-7. I'll take your call at five o'clock in the morning if I have to. Because I'm free for God. I've made my life available for God. That's me personally. Doesn't mean to say it's going to be you, but it's me. And that's what I live for. I live unto God the best I know how. I know I'm not perfect in every area. All right. And I don't claim to be. And I don't push myself out and try and show you that I'm perfect. Because I know I ain't. <laughs> Only God is perfect, right? But I'm doing the best I know. And I'm encouraging with a full, pure heart. And if you receive these words gladly tonight and you take some of the information and run with it like a ball, you're going to be successful. You will prosper. You will <coughs> prosper. In the book of Acts, we see it again. They received the apostles' doctrine. They received what Peter said gladly. Not like, well, I didn't agree with that. You know, I don't. I couldn't see that in the Old Testament anywhere. Oh, my gosh, no, that's terrible. <laughs> you didn't see that heart. It was like, wow, look at this man. Look at the words of wisdom pouring out of his mouth. Oh, yes, God, I want this for my life. And everyone turned their hearts to God, not to them. They didn't turn it to the disciples or the apostles at that time. They had great reverence and love for them because they were speaking words of life. But the hearts were turned to God. They went to God with a full heart honest heart not messing around heart not trying to say look i'm spiritual heart and i know it all heart because none of us know it all god knows it all and when we're tapped into him then we know what we need to know for that day for that time for that week for that moment for that spiritual circumstance and situation that's going on in your life and god is a god of deliverance we need to raise our expectation we need to speak to the illnesses we need to speak to the mountains you need to speak to your lack you need to speak to your poverty Let's get some spiritual gumption and take a stand, like no, refuse, refuse anything less. No, I am God's child. I am God's child. Like you, you see, uh, was it Prince Charles or he's King Charles now? Yeah. They know what's rightfully theirs. They can walk in and command because they know who they are. Well, we know who we are. We're a child of the creators of the heaven and the earth. We are brothers and sisters of the king. We're joint, joint heirs with him. Jesus Christ, the king, right? He is the king. Coming back, king of king, lord of lords. He is our master. He is our master. He is. He's our lord. What do we say? Yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is my lord. And I believe God's raised him from the dead. Lord. In other words, he's the one giving us that wonderful direction. God through him. God, God in Christ, that's that gift of Holy Spirit. You are powerful. Don't let your circumstances kick your butt. But you kick their butt. You kick that circumstances butt. Take a stand. Do not move. Refuse to worry. Refuse to give up. Refuse to give in. What are you going to give up to anyway? What are you going to bomb out to anyway? Oh, I've had enough of this. I'm not going to do it anymore. Well, where are you going? Where are you going? Come on. Like, even the disciples were sensible. <laughs> yeah. When Jesus Christ turned around and said, unless you eat my flesh or drink of my blood, right, you can't have any part of me. And everyone left him. Then he turned to the disciples and said, what about you? Are you going to leave me also? But you have the words of life. Where are we going to go? Well, they were pretty smart to even recognize that. So I would point out to you, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? Our only hope is our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And you've already got him, baby. You're filled with the spirit of God. And you need to wake up and give yourself a pep talk every morning. 
you need to start saying what God says, even if your stomach's turning over, even if your leg's falling off, even if your arm's falling off, get up and get moving. Okay, we're not giving into circumstances. We're not giving into the force of this world because we're above the force of this world. God wants us to prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. He's given us every means to do that, but it's up to us. He's given us Holy Spirit. We got to use that Holy Spirit. He's giving you seeds to sow. You got to sow those seeds. He's giving you spirit to speak in tongues. He's giving you a mouth to speak. Are you willing to do it? God's looking for people that will speak to him. And I tell you what, you're going to need to start speaking for him because God's going to bring them. And you might miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Stay with God. Stay blessed. Stay encouraged. Know that you're loved. Know you've got the support of heaven. You've got the support of God. You've got the support of Jesus Christ. You've got support of the angels. You've got support of the Amen. minister and all those that love God. You've got that support. You are well backed. So where are you going? Where are you going to go to? Tell me. Man, God is with you. He loves you so much. You are his masterpiece. You are his masterpiece. He hasn't spoken any negative words of you. He's spoken all his spiritual blessings into your life. And God wants you to be strong. God says, ask him and you shall receive. Seek him and you shall find. Knock on the door shall be open unto you. This is what God is saying. God says, if you do that, I'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. What's the biggest thing you ask God? But I can't ask God for that. That's a bit too much. Ask him for it. If there's a need for it, for you to have it, you'll get it. Right? God if God calls, he provides. He called me to go full time. I had nothing. I was in debt, but I still took the step. I took the step of faith into the unknown. This was the unknown. And I took that step, but he provided me in the same day I gave up my job. In the same day. And God has provided for me all the way. He's provided for me all the way. So don't give up hope, guy. God is our hope in our hopelessness. This is a great year of abounding in faith, right? Abounding in faith, abounding in expectation. The thing that God put in my heart Christmas time, that we're going to abound in hope. Expectation, hope is expectation. Hope is the things that you haven't got yet, but they're there. And the way you receive them is by faith. So I know it's right on this little thing God put in my heart, right? I know it's right on. And it could be for you too. It could be your thing. Because God's with you all the way. So whatever your situation is or whatever area, you might be really good in one area and crap in another. But God says, I'll provide that need too. You just need to touch me. Uh, trust me. If I can provide you up here where you're doing good, can't I provide for you down there? If I can provide you on the finances, can't I provide for you on the, on the physical? If I can provide for you on the physical, can't I provide you on the finances? God can do anything what he wants. Now, wherever your goal, if your goal's up here and your faith's down here, you've got to get your faith up on to the level of your goal. Well, I can't get there because I haven't got the money. Money is not the issue. You just got to make the decision to do what you're going to do without any money or without any doctors. Make the decision for what you want and start walking on the water and then you'll see that need get met. You'll see the provision for what you need come. And listen, we sow into a good ground. Sow into good ground. Why do you want to sow where someone is not practicing and speaking by the spirit, where someone is not being fruitful? They're just going through the motions. You sow where you're being fed. You sow where you're being encouraged. You sow, That's why I sow to India, to, to my minister, because he's given me good words. He's given me words that have brought me to life. He's refined me through the heavenly words and the sound doctrine. You can have the same. You can have the sack same and you are getting the sack same. So I'm just getting really excited, you know what I mean? So I know Satan hates all these words because yeah. it's just shining so bright right now. Devils are running off from the north to the south to the east to the west. Abundance is coming. Deliverance is coming. Healing is coming. Open doors are coming. This is how you got to think and this is how you got to speak. And if you do that, practice that, God will give you the energy, the inspiration, the energizing for these things. Or you can sit there and feel sorry for yourself. What do you want to do? What you want to do is up to you. So choose you this day. Choose you this day, death or life. And so that's what was in my heart to share.